Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, here at our TV pavilion at K2016. We are talking, of course, about Industry 4.0, and our today's topic is security and standards, how to be on the safe side. At the beginning, I would like to introduce to you my guests on uh, this stage. This is first Dr. Harald Weber of VDMA Plastics and Rubber Machinery. Welcome. <laughs> then beside me, it's Michael Wittmann, Managing Director of the Wittmann Group. Good afternoon. W welcome to you. And last but not least, Heinz Gaub, um, Managing Director, Technology and Engineering of Arburg. Welcome. <laughs> talking about uh, data, about standards, uh, the entire K is talking about Industry 4.0. This is really the topic this year. Um, we have to do with not only with machinery uh, in this concern, but with data, with big data. Do you think, Mr. Wittmann, that uh, the industry is already ready to handle this big data? Um, in general, I would say actually that uh, big data is definitely a big phrase here, not only at the K-Show, but uh, whenever you open any kind of trade magazine. Um, a lot of uh, talk about it. Is, it, uh, is the industry ready for it? Actually, I would say partially it is ready. I mean, um, some companies are preparing for it already, actually. They are collecting the so-called big data, but not to make it actually then to a big um, a data yard. Yeah, That's the big problem, actually, just still be able uh, to analyze the data to make uh, something useful out of it. And uh, yeah, I mean, there are so many different levels of it. Uh, I would say it really depends on the company itself, uh, how much they are investing into it and uh, where they stand at this point. Yeah. I, I don't think there is a general response to this question, actually, on, on from, from my side. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, Mr. Gaub, um, the, um, the customers that you are selling your products to uh, do have to adopt to Industry 4.0, um, uh, certainly. Uh, it is a trend in um, all the major industries, like mm -hmm. automotive industry, yep. like medi uh, medical, like uh, consumer products. Um, are your customers already uh, in the picture of how to use the data you are processing? Are they demanding these data or are you offering more than, than they can handle at this time? Yeah, our customers, uh, you know, they're running processes with very high frequency and uh, large part numbers. So for a long time, they're already generating a lot of data. <coughs> and it's the machine controller's ability to provide tools for uh, data storing and uh, mainly data analysis for the operator to improve the um, injection molding process. So they're used to uh, handle big amounts of data on the machine, even more so uh, when they have a connected, uh, a networked factory, machines connected in a manufacturing ex execution system. Uh, they're used to um, handle big amounts of data from all the factory floor analyze them, use them for quality, uh, quality control, quality prediction, maintenance, scheduling. So yeah, they are prepared to use it. They're already using it. Uh, now it comes to uh, another level of transparency and uh, another level of transparency also to the outside of the individual customer factory, to the machine supplier and to their customers as well. Mm -hmm. Dr. Weber, um, Looking back three years, at the last K in 2013, most of the people who came to Dusseldorf to the K 2013 were, um, well, talking and thinking about um, hardware, about machines, about processes, um, partially in uh, full automated lines already, but vo only very few of them talked about Industry 4.0. This year, this is completely different. Do you think that um, the speed of this trend um, might be a danger to this industry because everything has to, or everybody has to rush now to, to jump into this topic of Industry 4.0. Is it a danger? Uh, I don't think it's a danger. I think it's very good to have this discussion going on on Industry 4.0 because it's a big chance we have and to use this drive we have. There are many technologies available for many years already. 
for having remote access to the machine is not completely new. But now to speak about it, to make use of the data which is already existing, to create the networks between the machines so that the ma manufacturers increase their cooperation, the communication, not only between the machines, but also between the different suppliers and manufacturers. Uh, this is really the benefit we have with this dis discussion of Industry 4.0. And so the speed, the, the drive we have is really helping us to bring this topic forward to give an awareness from the customer side. Not to say, okay, Industry 4.0 is something within a big cloud and you do not know what it really is. No, to show here there are many aspects what you can do by exchanging data, by using the data, and to create benefit of it. So if you go to all the different manufacturers, everyone has a different approach to this, but it all gives a complete picture of what you can do and you can choose. The prerequisite for all that for that market trend industry 4.0 um, are standards. Without um, um, the standards, you couldn't um, have the right interfaces between machines, um, between the network, and even between machines of different suppliers. So how do you think um, this uh, process of standardization uh, has gone forward uh, up to now? Is that already satisfying for you, or do you still think there is a, a way to go? Um, we're very satisfi satisfied about the latest standard, the latest um, initiative from the VDMV and the Euromap about Euromap 77. This is absolutely for Industry 4.0 something that goes in the right direction, yeah, because it really allows you now to have different molding machines. Yeah, I can say from company, company our work, from our machine, for example, to be connected to an <coughs> MES system, to an ERP system. Absolutely, this is the right way of doing it. Otherwise, actually, it would, there would never be something that is manufacturer independent. And in the end, yeah, it can only be a success if many manufacturers are able to be connected to the same EM MES system. We as a company are absolutely a fan of standardizations. Yeah, we try to use it as much as possible, as much as there is, and I can only say congratulations also, that it was yeah. a very long process. I believe it took a couple of years here to work out uh, Euromap 77, not completely finalized yet, but it will be finalized very soon. Mm -hmm. And uh, I can only hope that the same will be done actually on the other equipment. And if I talk about the other equipment, I mean, for example, then to go down to the next levels of products. Yeah? Next level of product would be the robot, for example. Yeah? Would be the material handling system, would be temperature controllers. Yeah? If, that is not, if there is no standard here, uh, it cannot be successful. Yeah, and certainly companies will come with their own specifications, with their own proprietary uh, solutions, yeah, which still might depend on a partial standard, like OPC UA, for example. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Everybody actually nowadays has realized and they have accepted yeah, that OPC UA is a way of communication, but it, there needs to be still actually here a definition of the namespace of uh, what exactly and how should it be um, how should the data be exchanged between the different manufacturers? We are a big fan, we are following. As soon as there's the next initiative, yeah, the next working session for another Euromap XX, yeah, then we will try to be part of that and we will definitely support it. Mr. Gaub, the same uh, at Arborg, are you al al also a fan of the, uh, um, the standards we have reached so far? Yes, we definitely are. We started uh, to work uh, with uh, OPC UA uh, more than five years ago in 2010. Today, uh, OPC UA is the interoperability standard, uh, interoperability standard for industrial automation. So uh, everyone, I think, said uh, did the right choice. Uh, and now the specification <coughs> or the adaption of this interoperability standard for injection molding or plastics industry is just the right way. Standards, the field of standards is a field where companies uh, like uh, our two companies and our competitors, this is not really a field for competition. Uh, it's important for the user, for our customers to have reliable standards, interfaces uh, they can count on, they can be manufacturer independent and then we have different fields where we compete on the performance of the efficiency of our machines. But uh, certain basic standards are like the foundation for this, uh, for this industry and for this way of trading to go forward. Mm -hmm. Now we heard about the advantages, the positive side of, uh, of Industry 4.0, about big data handling. But uh, 
we should be open. We should also talk about the, the, the backdrop of the, uh, of the topic. Uh, when, for example, talking about data, your machine data, which are crucial um, um, data, which you surely will not want to be in the wrong hands. Uh, how can you, for example, s um, make sure that these data are not let's say, hacked uh, when transferred to other countries, to other markets, um, to other companies. How can that be provided that your data is still in your uh, protective area? Dr. Weber. I think there are already mechanisms in the also standard OPC UA protocol to ensure the safety uh, to have, like when you have online banking to use certificates uh, so that do not trust every client to connect to your machines uh, that you can have encrypted uh, data transfer also you can use then the standard network security measures like uh, vpn connections and so on and to emphasize this you do not have to send every data somewhere in the cloud to make, take benefit of Industry 4.0. I think this is a big mistake. Often that it mixed up together, Industry 4.0 is equal to sending everything to a cloud to the internet. You can start within your own factory, setting up uh, there an, an MAS and central computer, so nothing goes outside. You are, have totally control of your data, know where it goes, and have benefit of it. So if you have a factory, you have... 50 machines running from different manufacturers, not to having to go to every machine to check if it is running, if the parameters are in the limits. You can use your central computer at your site to have the control. The next step is then worldwide connection, different production sites. Then, of course, you have to protect the internet connections. Mm -hmm. But there are already measures to also make this secure. Can I ask something? Of course. Um, the one thing is definitely actually to have a safe communication, perfect OPC UA, UA actually allows a safe communication, but it doesn't help a lot actually if you have an unsafe system underneath it. Yeah. And uh, for example, in our industry, it's very common that uh, manufacturers, our customers are using equipment for 20 years, 15 years, whatever. Uh, nowadays, the majority of machines is still running with Windows 95, for example, and everybody knows actually that there will not be any support on it. Yeah. And uh, nowadays we are using Windows 10 IoT, okay, will be available, will be supported for the next, I'm not sure exactly, 10, 15 years possibly. But eventually uh, it will be, so to speak, out of life, out of maintenance. Yeah. And that is definitely for us a concern also potentially for the, for the molder, because when it's connected now to the internet, yeah, to an unknown uh, network, yeah, a customer network, then the question only is how safe is the machine? It depends on the safety level actually that each customer, that each molder has uh, implemented. That's the reason actually why we are going one step further, if I may, may make <laughs> say actually here. Uh, what we have done is actually we have isolated or we want to isolate yeah, the molding machine from the customer network. Yeah in the sense that we have, um, that we're installing a router, a separate router actually, uh, with our own uh, open source router software, where we are able to absolutely control, for example, here, uh, what kind of communication can be built up. Yeah, that's very normal actually to have some ports, uh, or if actually if there is an attack, for example, yeah, um, that there's the typical port scanning, what kind of ports are open, yeah, what kind of protocols can be accessed. Yeah. For example, we are closing intentionally every port which is not absolutely used for the communication. The typical example would be, for example, port number 80 for HTTP protocol, yeah, and uh, to make sure that this not can cannot even be opened actually by any kind of virus. Yeah, this is a very specific uh, piece of software, very specific piece of hardware. Doesn't limit here the communication feature, but it definitely eliminates actually here the danger of uh, an outside attack. Mm -hmm. yeah. But what about those attacks that are willingly made uh, by, for example, customers who are in the power of demanding those data from you. Let's talk about the automotive industry. We have to do with suppliers, automotive suppliers, and very powerful customers like the car manufacturers, the OEMs. We know that they are um, putting an enormous pressure, a cost pressure on their supplier. So what if one day they ask the supplier to open the books? and let them have insight into data of the machines. Is that a scenario uh, that might disturb the, uh, the growing process of Industry 4.0, or is that already handleable, Mr. Gaub? 
Uh, that is actually indeed a concern <coughs> most often with uh, smaller companies, smaller injection molding shops. But the trend for their customers to qui require a large number of data, their injection molding data, all the way down to the injection process, they do that anyway, and they're requiring open books and open calculation. They know many details. Um, connected uh, factories, uh, industry for zero, is just a technical means of making it easier to them, and that is indeed often seen as the drawback, uh, as the other side of the coin for I for zero. The good part for the is for remote service, for example, for us as a machine manufacturer to remotely service um, machines in the field. That is the good part. <coughs> but if it's technically possible to go all the way to the details in a machine controller, the customers as our of our customers will require that as well. That is, that is a critical point. And uh, the question is how open, how electronically open uh, do our customers uh, have to run their factory with respect to their customers? That is, that is certainly a critical point. And uh, for us as a machine builder, it means we need to er build and earn a lot of trust for them from them before we can actually install those, uh, the hardware and the, 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 uh, the network service, for example. But with your machines getting smarter and smarter every, every year, um, there is a new quality of uh, of data that you can supply so um, with your diog uh, diagonals uh, with your sensors in the machines um, with the with the nec network data you are handling um, you are getting more um, let's say upgraded in the level of discussion with your customers right so i guess uh, the talks with your customers are on a different level today with industry 4.0 than they have been five or ten years ago right that's absolutely correct and uh I can only say, Chin, I want to add to uh, what the statement of Mr. Gaub that uh, even nowadays, yeah, it's already the communication between an automotive molder and the cu their customer is already a completely open book yeah, at this point, because there might even be the requirement right now actually to give all kinds of parameters yeah, in the end actually, or even to install their system, the customer system actually, at the automotive molder. Yeah. So whatever is possible right now, in the future it will be even easier. Uh, but is there, will there be an, an increased data exchange? Maybe yes, uh, but it will be at the same level as today. Yeah. Uh, I don't believe that many molders nowadays can keep a secret. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what I always wanted to know is, what about those machines who are which are already in the marketplace? Your machines have um, a, a very long lifetime, yeah, 15, 20 years mm -hmm. sometimes. Um, if you walk around, for example, in the automotive industry, in the consumer product industry, all of your machines are still running uh, with happy customers. But what yeah. about those machines um, in the future? Will they be disconnected from the industry 4.0 world? Or um, can you offer already solutions that incorporate those used and um, existing machines in the network? Yeah, it's um, <coughs> for machines that are a number of years old, uh, we shipped in the last six to eight years, it's relatively easy to retrofit an OPC UA interface, for example. Uh, that's a relatively low cost uh, retrofitting uh, process in a machine and then it's th they can connect it to the MES in the factory as just as well as a new machine. For machines older than that, uh, it's also uh, possible to connect them to an MES with a simple I.O. Uh, I.O. box, I.O. connection. Of course, the level of transparency and, and the quality of data is not as good, but it's good enough for the basic functions. So uh, many of our customers, um, they have connected machines uh, much older than 2009. They have connected um, uh, peripheral components, they have uh, connected factory elevators, they have connected dryers, all sorts of, uh, of machines or machinery functional uh, in a factory entirely independent of, of age. So yes, it's relatively easy to retrofit and those machines will not be excluded from, from industry for zero. So you can protect the investment actually of your customers, right? Your former uh, in, in investment in, in those machines from the past. Yeah, it is possible to connect them. I believe actually right now the trend is right now to talk here about new machines 
what are the potentials actually here of uh, using the features and the benefits of industry 4.0 maybe the next step is because you cannot do everything at the same time and we are still talking about different kind of technology would be to add them afterwards mm -hmm. yeah, i believe actually it's really a step-by-step -step process mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I made the experience when I talked to people about Industry 4.0 who are not in the industry, but from outside the industry. And uh, if I tried to explain to them what this industry is about to do uh, in the next years and, and uh, explain a little bit, and they say, well, poof, uh, isn't that difficult? Because if I try to get a, a network on my mobile phone somewhere in Germany or in Austria and uh, I'm in the, in the middle of nowhere, I can get, get no connection, even for my phone connection, how will that work for machine manufacturers and entire industries? Uh, the, the bottom of, of the line is, do we have the prerequisites? Do we have the, the, the data um, lines available that are necessary to, ha to handle all that already? Or do you require a data network improvement yet? Uh, I believe actually that uh, this is only to, to be able actually to have a, 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 a cell phone to run in the forests and still have a complete control over your company is only one aspect of it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you don't need to have actually a permanent uh, connection here. It would be important actually here to collect the data somewhere on some kind of a service to be able actually afterwards to really connect to it. Yeah. And uh, so once again, this is just one aspect of it. Yeah. Uh, so I and I don't see this as the most important aspect of it. Yeah. But actually, when um, talking about big industry applications, now we have a worldwide business. We have the need to connect pr uh, factories, the need to connect machines uh, from China, from Mexico, from Germany, from the US. Um, we have to talk about global standards as well. Because what we managed to do, obviously, is to have good standards here in, in Germany. The European standards are well on its way. But what about the worldwide standards? Uh, this, of course, is the next steps then. So we started off the German standard, not VDMA specification. We started on European level, Euromap recommendation to have all the main manufacturers from Europe on board. But we will definitely talk also to the other association to get in contact with SPI and also, and I think, also with China uh, to get this running also worldwide. But also at the moment, we have all the Euromap interfaces not 4.0 interfaces, but they are really widely accepted in the industry. So I think if we are now here with the first, with the standard, an established standard, and then also proven standard, we are now in the implementing phase, in the testing phase, I think there's really a good chance that this standard will also be a worldwide standard in the future. Very good. Gentlemen, it was a pleasure having you here on stage. Thank you very much for your time uh, and uh, your insights into uh, security and standards of Industry 4.0. Thank you very much and thank you for watching, ladies and gentlemen, here at the TV Pavilion at the K2016. Thank you and see you tomorrow. Bye. <laughs>